So, uh, I guess welcome everybody to the May 13th, 2014 meeting of the New York City Voter Assistance Advisory Committee. That's a public meeting and a hearing, so I look, look forward to everybody's participation here. Um, the first, um, first action is approval of minutes from October 21st and the October, February 24th meetings. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it is unanimous. Fantastic. Okay, so um, I'm going to make my, uh, my, uh, my, um, my uh, report very short. Um, I'm very excited that we have put out, um, this is our second annual 2013 and 14 voter assistance report. And so for those of you in the public who are watching you know, via the web, um, you know, you can find this at the Campaign Finance Board's website. Um, great work by the staff and uh, thank you everybody who participated, um, it's a great job. Um, I want to also um, announce that um, on June 4th uh, of this year, um, from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, at New York Law School, um, we are going to be um, hosting a, a very important event. Um, it is a mini conference um, about um, tools and tool makers for elections. Um, we're at a point now where some of the disruptive technologies that are being that we see in the consumer world are being adopted in a way that governments can finally work with them. And so there are three um, three nonprofit organizations that are presenting. Um, NC Votes uh, will showcase staff um, for um, registrations. Program that so communications if they've contributed more. Um, this would the other part of this legislation, which requires requires some technical changes. It would is trying to reach back to I, I can't remember the word that they use. He uses um, to transfer. If you've transferred money for the purpose of uh, funding a political advertisement, so there's some work being done on uh, that language, but that would also. So that piece of legislation would do both those things. Great. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, then Anita, do you have a report? Hello. So, in less than a week from now, next Tuesday, May 20th, we will have our first NYC Votes Advocacy Day, where we're going to travel to Albany with a broad coalition of partners. Uh, I would like to invite our back board member, Tony Casino, who is the lead on this, along with uh, myself and Eric, to give us an update on that first. So thank you. Um, really, I mean, it's, it's Anita and, and the staff here have been amazing at really putting this together and I'm just along for the ride here, really. Um, they. Uh, they recognize, we all, rec everybody in this room recognizes that the, we need to do something about the laws that govern our voting, and whether it's the city or the state, and oftentimes it is the state that has the most to say about how we do this. So we updated you at the last meeting about some of the initiatives that we're looking at, early voting, improving ballot design, modern, modernized voter registration, adopting some runoff voting, pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds are some of the topics that we've, we've put out there. But um, without getting into all the detail of each one of them, because they're all, you know, there's some disagreement uh, out there with some of them, we, we tried to pick bills that had a shock and that had some real support. Been talking to elected officials and um, the culmination really is this day going up there and putting together a coalition to go up there. And um, they've done an amazing job at getting elected officials excited about it. Uh, they don't hear enough, I think, about this. Um, and, and going up there and meeting with senators and assembly members, uh, a good number of them are set up here and they are going to be meetings throughout the day. There's a bus that they charted to go up. <coughs> How many people with groups of So we're hoping that we're going to be about a group of 30. 30, 30 mm -hmm. people representing different organizations, ranging from good government groups to some groups that may not normally be in the process, uh, you know, Nyberg and Alliance of South Asian American Labor and PWU, et cetera, a lot of partners. 
Um, and really just beginning, we're looking at this as the beginning of, of uh, going out there and, and making the case that we need to change some of these laws. And, um, you know, we sort of have been passive in the past, you know, wait for legislation to come in the door and we'll support it, we still, will sh we still should do that. Here we're trying to take more of a proactive approach and let them know that we're not going away, that this is something that people really do care about. And we have some, some people in the group are uh, parent representatives at schools and they talk about that, that, the need to make it easier for everybody to vote and to be involved in the process. So it's, um, it's exciting, it's new, um, and it, it really just is the beginning, I think. Uh, nothing's going to happen right away, although there are some bills that are close that could happen shortly thereafter, uh, but everybody's taking, I think, the right approach, which is that it's going to take a little while to get it, get it, you know, where we want it, but it's a start, and uh, really a credit to Anita, Eric, and the staff here who have been working hard to pull it all together, a lot of details to do put it together, so, and leaving early for Albany at 6 a.m., and mm -hmm. a luncheon, and a lot of meetings, so it should be very exciting. Thank you very much, Tony, and thank you to you, because he's come in several times, we've had trainings for the public, mm -hmm. where he has led that also, so I really appreciate his commitment to it. Um, so, another project that we are embarking on, uh, but we're at the very early stages of, but we're also engaging another VAC member, uh, Joan Gibbs, who is the borough president's rep. So we're looking at different ways that we can engage the boroughs uh, to work toward uh, increasing voter participation and finding ways that we might be able to do some kind of battles of the boroughs, uh, looking at percentages and creating incentives so uh, Joan is going to work with us as we develop that and reach out to the borough presidents and to the community groups within each of those boroughs to see if there are ways that we can have a pathway to success this year. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, the staff and I have been working really hard at LL29, as we know is a big transition with all of the agencies, so understanding who are the new representatives. Uh, we have an orientation that's slated for when, uh, I think it's June 13th. So we will invite in each of the agency reps and do an orientation again. Uh, make it, the biggest thing always is making sure that they're using the right forms because they're supposed to be using coded forms. So we go through a whole um, session with them making sure that they are compliant and then beyond that trying to find creative ways that they can also encourage New Yorkers and inform New Yorkers about their voting rights and participating in elections. Uh, we're also really excited that the CAS is um, uh, working with us to put merchandising, NYC both merchandising, into the city store. Uh, so we think that would be you know, a nice little piece. <laughs> uh, also, April and May have been very busy months for the youth voter coordinator, Cheyenne. She has been traveling with our uh, YPL, our Youth Poet Laureate, and I think between the two of them, they've had like 25 appearances at different places. Uh, they've even coupled with the First Lady on two at the Tribeca Film Festival and at Ryan Park for Home in a Pocket Day. So they've been in, in very good company <laughs> uh, and, and giving a good message. Um, we have uh, been working with our other partners, HHC, Health and Hospital Corporations, and this month alone, I know both Stuart and, and uh, Sabrina have done training sessions. There are about nine voter drives happening in the hospitals this month, uh, and they are also partnering with the New York Organ Donor. So there will be a lot of presence there, and, and we continue to work with HHC because uh, and for National Voter Registration Day, they uh, registered a very high amount of uh, people. Do you remember how much that was? I can't remember. Yeah. But they had a very um, sizable amount, and we want to kind of work on that. And, and since there was some success there, to make it even stronger this year. Uh, and we're really happy to announce that we have a new major partner in Citibank. So Citibank has joined forces and said that they would like to carry our voter spotlights. We have about three voter registrations in their high traffic areas this month. 
and um, we're really excited about what that partnership is going to mean and we're hoping that they'll be involved with some of our borough uh, work that we're going to do. So Great. that's it for now. Thank you. Well, thank you. So um, should we open it up to public? Um, yep. <coughs> so I guess do we have uh, people who wish to testify? Yeah. Have our hearing. Um, t this hearing is technically to be about the report that we issued, um, required by the charter, uh, to be held after the report is issued. But obviously, we are open to hearing comments about anything or things that our people are interested in and what we're working on. So um, I don't know if uh, people are interested in testifying or not, but I just have a list. Alex? Uh, I, I actually, okay. I didn't prepare a testimony. Okay. Um, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, we'll see. I, we've been in Albany okay. um, lobbying on campaign finance reform, trying to replicate the system here, so um, I spent most of my day there yesterday and did not get Oh, you should probably, you should probably name me. Yeah, Sorry, Alex. Um, yeah, and your, and your organization. Are they live streaming this? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. Um, Alex Camardo with Citizens Union. I mean, I'm happy to talk um, about the report and some of the things that we are working on. Unless others that want to look at testimony. Want to, want to. Maisa? Maisa, you, Maisa always comes well prepared. <laughs> and she'll also be traveling with us to all the things. All Bengali languages in, in other boroughs. My name is Mazeda Eudi and I am the National Women Chair of the Alliance of South Asian American Labor. I would like to thank your Board of Election Commission and Advisory Assistant Committee for the opportunity to speak about my observation and experience in election days. I would also like to thank your Board of Elections uh, for an overall job all done despite some need for correction. Thank you for your commitment, efforts, and preserve the civil rights of all Americans, especially for your commitment to defend the right to vote. We ask the New York Board of Election to voluntarily provide Bengali interpreters in specific poll size in the Brown City Council District 18, Pachester area, and Brooklyn City Council District 39, Charles and McDonald's area. And even though they are not federally required to do so. The board um, just recently responded that they are not federally required to do and would only provide language assistance to targeted full sites that are recovered under Section 23 in Queens. Despite the fact of that, we have informed them that there is a demonstrated need. The board should provide interpreters at a specific size when the community inform them to demonstrate needed even if they are not required federally to do so. Required language assistance must, must be better. Please see all the observation letter to the board dated December 3rd, 2013. All interpreters and signers must be present. There have been serious issues in the past. ALDEP will again monitor the elections this fall as well as the primary election. ASAL and other partners will be the trained and participate in the full monitoring. All workers cannot be required ID for voters that are not first-time voters. 
at Thomas Edison High School, the door clerk has done this is the first two South Asian voters. Machines break down in the first in area South Asian voters took too long to fix it. All poll workers need to know that voters can be assisted by the person of other choice except their boss or union representative, including inside the voting booths. Most poll workers do not know this. We have observed this. Translation errors must be caught in advance and corrected, including in the candidate guide. In the last election, the Chinese translation on two ballot initiative were cut and pasted and had the exact same translated language for two different initiatives. This must not be happen again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> I'm happy to just speak off the cuff about a couple of things. Okay. Um, I'm sorry? That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so let me start with the report. I mean, congratulations on issuing this report. I think it's very helpful to have this after each election cycle and, you know, know the work uh, that the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee does and, and also to uh, get a sense of what you're looking at going forward. Um, and I know we, we met recently with uh, Onita and the staff on agency-based registration, and one of the priorities that we spotlighted was the fact that um, the, the form that's distributed in the law actually is required to include, so the, the intake form is required to be connected to the voter registration form so that the person completing it could then detach it and send it in themselves or ask the agency to do so. Uh, and I think we were able to identify that some of the agencies were doing that, but not all of them, and that was something we wanted to work on together. And I need to invite us to participate in the, um, in the event on the, the 13th of training so that we could come and talk to the agencies about this, because we think that's really critical in the sense that when people complete forms, if they go to a doctor's office or uh, what have you, they usually you know, just do one right after the other, and, and if it's connected, we're, I think we're going to see a lot more registrations coming in. Um, the data that we have from this, the city board, and I don't know to what extent it's accurate, it suggests that you know just under 3,000 forms actually come from the agencies. Um, there is the issue of whether they are actually distributing forms that are not the coded forms, but you know we're trying to get a sense of how many they actually um, give out to voters, how many come back, so that we can spotlight which agencies are doing this well and which aren't, and share best practices and so forth. Um, so that's one thing we're working on together. And then the other issue that has come up that I've talked about briefly with Eric uh, in relation to Turbo Vote as well is this notion of expanding the app that you folks created this last um, year and expanding it to beyond campaign finance information to voter registration itself. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the barrier to doing that all on an app or all online is the signature requirements uh, in the law. But we've actually done a very deep dive on that from a legal perspective, and we actually can't find any mention in state law or case uh, proceedings that suggests that there has to be a handwritten or wet signature. The phrasing that's used is original signature. So what we're wondering is if, um, you know, how the courts would view it if someone was to sign on their phone with their finger or some other device, but not you know, a pen, and how the board would interpret that if they received a form uh, that was effectively an electronic signature. And I think a case can be made that that is legal, and I think uh, that would be something we'd be interested in seeing an app expanded to that effect and seeing if the board would accept it, and if not, potentially bring a case. So I think that would be really transformative in a way that yeah. um, that you folks have tried to use technology if we could you know, get registration done through uh, apps or even online. Um, so that people wouldn't have to do all these forms, and then if the agencies could start to do that, I think the multiplier effect of that would be pretty dramatic. That's great. They requested a, an opinion from either in-house counsel there, or the city would, who would look at this with the corporate counsel look at this? Who would, who would issue an opinion on this? So that's something we're looking more. into, and we have made that request. I do not have yet any feedback from the uh, individuals and entities we've asked other than 
Um, they want to look at it before we make any public statements about it, but we have people reviewing it. Because I mean, now I mean, under HAVA, does, isn't the isn't registration a state function? Mm -hmm. Part of yeah. so, I mean, I my, would assume that I mean, you can ask for an advisory opinion from the state board election, right? The thing is, that it would be coming from the from you folks potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Citizens Union, a nonprofit, cannot ask. For example, we cannot ask Corporation Counsel or the Attorney General's office for an opinion. Mm -hmm. An agency can. Well, when we look into yeah, uh, yeah. What, the, uh, what the process of maybe doing that, um, of course, then you get the answer, and it may not be the answer you want. Yeah. To, well, yeah, but that's better to get clarification. Yeah. That's fascinating. Right. Catherine, you have Excuse me. I was, um, yeah. I was wondering, because of how the poll books re uh, include the signature, how, how, how does your legal counsel uh, suggest that would be addressed with an electronic signature? Well, that, that, that's actually one of the arguments in favor. Um, uh, of an electronic signature is the fact that the at the poll site, when you go to sign the book, they actually compare your signature to an electronic signature. That comes from an original signature um, when you first complete your registration form, but the Board of Elections actually discards those after a period of time and then just has electronic ones. The other issue is the Department of Motor Vehicles, through which many people uh, first register, they also take in a paper form with a, a handwritten signature initially, but the information that they actually send to the Board of Elections is a photograph of that, a digital photograph that's then sent as a separate file from the data. So again, uh, I don't know if they're later sending the forms, but clearly they're relying on the electronic signature as well. But what you're thinking of is like like when you do when you go like when you buy something in Square or whatever, and you actually sign your name. You know, it's not like an electronic signature in the like, you know the sense of an electronic signature, which is like a series of codes or digital verifications that you know authenticate that you are you. It's really an actual physical like you know you sign your name with you know with a pair right. of your finger. So it looks so they can actually have a copy of your signature, but it's electronic. I mean, the analogy we use yeah. is like when you go to the grocery store and you pay with a debit card or, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, credit card, and then you have to sign with that little electronic pen, and you can see your signature there on the mm -hmm. screen, and mm -hmm. the transaction is completed. Mm -hmm. well, that's there are a number of impediments. I mean, it's uh, <coughs> we, we, you know we did some research from here the NYC votes tools. Um, so the the state board of elections. Apparently has a relatively modern and robust technology to process voter registration, both new registrations and to maintain voter registration systems. Um, they currently do not. What we learned is, is that it, they do not expose APIs or connect or interfaces to that technology to issue of of, kind of then. So what, what happens is, is there's new, the new voter registration forms, which, you know, where they require the wet signature is one issue. But the bigger problem is actually the maintenance of your voter registration account. Right? When your address changes, when you, when you get married or you change your name, if um, somebody dies or moves without notifying the, the state, um, those records are, are, are not maintained well. And so, there is no really good sense of actually how many active registered voters are still remaining as compared to the overall number of folks reported as being registered. So, you know, this, this whole process has resulted in this sort of accumulation of really sturdy data related to people's IDs that, that basically the technology is there to maintain it but the business processes used by the state and therefore also the ability to connect to it are, are really hampered. In Virginia, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but so what OSET has done on their solution, because Virginia has a, a, a required wedding signature. And so what they do is um, a voter can fill out their um, registration online, the form that every voter registration then comes with a specific barcode. The document then is supplied as a PDF to the registrant as well as mailed to them. They sign it, it gets sent back to the registrar, 
and they have a scanner at their desk to just simply compare the codes, which then automatically completes the registration. And then after that, the voter can go into their system and maintain their records and update it because they're trying to cleanse their, their database of, of, of people. And then finally, what, where, where Virginia is going, and, and we're really excited to hear Osa talk about this, is that since they have the data for the voter registrations, and they have actually all of the signatures, that they're going to move to digital poll books. So when you go who you are, and then, then check off what you're there, and that's actually very useful for things like accurate turnout counts. Mr. Chairman, I am. Um, so a question. So statutorily, um, what is the requirement? Is it it's a mark, right? Because it doesn't have to be a signature because some people don't sign. Someone may have a medical disability. Someone may not be literate. So it's just a mark, right? It depends on which section of the law you're looking at. So there's a section on, I mean, this is first statement. I there's the federal law, which is the uh, National Voter Registration Act that has certain requirements. And then the states had to create laws pursuant to that for um, agency-based registration. So agency-based uh, registration has its own requirements. And in state law, there's actually a section for essentially all the state agencies and then a section for the TMV, and they're not exactly the same. But, and then there's a separate voter registration section that just deals with you know, outside of the agencies, the typical registration process. None of those say anything about a wet or handwritten signature. Some say original signature, some are completely silent. Uh, I think there is a separate section that talks about if, you know, if you're not literate or if you can't, if you're uh, unable to write your signature that you can then mark the ballot. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is there's nothing that says handwritten. I mean, you, could you, present, you present a novel issue because of technology, there's different ways of now of attesting, even when you're signing court documents or other documents subject to penalty or perjury, right. you know, you attest and then you you click on something and then it gets in. So, you know, I think that there's ways to work around this perhaps um, without changing the law or, I mean, but that could be a conversation that's had um, with state officials to say, would this be something that's acceptable or, or do we need a change in the law to, to allow for this because that would really open the gates to allow more people to participate. The question then is to authenticate uh, that issue. I mean, that's what that's what we're trying to do, and, and one of the you know to get around some of the technological barriers. I mean, TurboVote, to my understanding, is you can go online, yeah. you can complete a voter registration form online. You can do this, by the way, with the, with the city board and state board elections as well. They then mail you the form, you sign it, and then send it. mail it back. Um, so TurboVote, if if we could simplify this, and people went to TurboVote, and then I think TurboVote started doing it, the state and city board would start doing it. But essentially, uh, you would go online, you would complete it, you know, ele electronically sign, and then they could just send it in for you, like a paper form. So you wouldn't have to deal with all the back end stuff. That would, for the voter, the experience would be the same as if it was seamless on the back end. So you raise a novel and important point. So we'll see how that works out. We're waiting for these legal opinions to come back, and if they're favorable or, you know. Um, Seem to suggest we're not going to do this, then I think we could pursue it further. Great. Great. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, okay. 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 Just to give uh, your name. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm Monica Barnley from the Center for Independence of the Disabled in New York. I'm the Voting Rights Coordinator. First of all, I'd just like to commend you on this report. I read it through <laughs> and found it very interesting. Um, some areas came out to me that made me um, think about our community of people with disabilities, for example, outreach um, and the um, voter registration drive. You know, I wonder in all of these, um, how many um, persons with disabilities were um, caught in that net, you know, in your outreach program? how many people were there with um, disabilities. I don't know if you took note of that. And I wondered how we could um, collaborate to um, get this outreach extended to our community as well. Secondly, I'd like to inform you about our public awareness program that we're 
doing with regards to using the BMD, the ballot marking device. We have um, made an outreach to our assembly members and council members asking them to use the ballot marking device to vote themselves and to publicize it in their newsletters. And we're asking everybody around this table, you know, when you vote, you could try using the um, ballot marking device. In that way, there would be greater awareness for it. It would not just be um, a segregated effort where only people with disabilities use the ballot marking device. And it can be beneficial to people who have um, vision problems or even people who wear glasses like myself in that you can enlarge the font and it's so easy really to use. Um, it would address the problem of the font on the ballots that we have now. So, you know, I'd just like to see more people <coughs> using the ballot marking device. Okay, that's that's, that's mm -hmm. great. I wish I had I wish I had the, the last election. Some of the remember I could I couldn't really read it. I had better yeah. before I had. Yeah. If I had not yeah, I mean, I used the ballot marking device at the last session, and, and you're right. You know what I mean? I, didn't, I mean, I remembered, you know, obviously, and I knew that people were talking about how to follow thought was, but you don't even notice because you're putting in the machine, and also it reminds you, you know, of all the, you know, did you, you know, did you skip something, you know, so it's like, you know, you, you know, you have to turn the ballot over to vote on the referendum. It's, it's great. Yes, I, I find it. <laughs> 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 and an electronic. Yeah. And um, this would also help the Board of Elections to put more emphasis on training poll workers because um, not all poll workers are aware of how to even set up the machine. So um, if more people wanted to use it, then um, poll workers would be better trained, mm -hmm. I'm sure. That's a good idea. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have you, uh, so have you informed the Board of Elections, I assume you informed them of this campaign, right? And have, what, have they responded to you? Well, um, the director is aware, the executive director is aware, and at the last meeting, the NAPRA meeting, remember? The uh, voter coalition meeting, <coughs> he mentioned that um, the goal is really towards um, getting one voting machine where everybody will use that, you know, in the future. Okay. Okay. So it will not be a ballot marking device of people with disabilities and, you know, so on. Um, the goal of the board is to work towards getting um, one machine that will be used by everybody, by all voters. I don't know how far in the distant future right. that is. <laughs> yes, but he